Hi, I'm Scott Brook. I'm the VP of Content at John. So let's talk a little about VR and what your play is in this space. Yeah, so John is, we like to call ourselves a full stack solution, which means we're making a camera solution. Uh, we're doing the software to interpret the world that the camera collects and then puts it into a form that you can use for existing post-production workflows. So it's meant to really be a tool for creatives that can use easily. I mean, this is definitely a new format and the camera is a very alien looking object. At the end of the day, it should be just as easy as using a traditional camera, but you just here you're capturing the full world around you. Can you talk a little about the demos you guys are showcasing here at Sundance? Yeah, specifically we're showing a piece called Kaiju Fury, uh, which is exciting. It's very much, it is a, a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek, B-movie, giant monster attack on a city. Uh, it's directed by Ian Hunter from uh, New Deal Studios. Ian's up for a visual effects award this year for his work on Interstellar. So it's just a really cool way of like, A, having a fun way to introduce people to the content, and B, we're using it, uh, we're showing it on Google Cardboard, and why that's important is that you can use your phone, and it can be a phone that's up to a year old, here we're showing on Android, uh, but with a simple device like a box, which is Google Cardboard, you can put the phone in there, put it up to your eyes, and experience true stereoscopic virtual reality. So it's mass, it's able to be reached by a number of people. Talk a little about the app and how you guys are distributing this content. Yeah, so right now we're doing a, uh, a separate app for each piece of content. Uh, that'll change in time, but it really wraps around a piece of content, whether uh, it's an app that we do for Paul McCartney, uh, putting you on stage with Paul at uh, Sir Paul at Candlestick Park, or with Jack White at Fenway, uh, or in the case of the giant kaiju attack, the app wraps around this single piece of content that puts you ground level while the giant monsters attack and tear down the city. I also noticed you have uh, World War II, the mission. Yeah, it's exciting because in each each piece we do, each one's meant to represent a different type of <clears throat> genre and to actually demonstrate, like no, no one of these pieces is meant to be a complete piece to show a be all and end all of the genre, but it's meant to jog people's imagination. Because um, every time we do this, we have to introduce a new piece of language to the art of shooting cinematic VR. Uh, it's really important that you use things like sound and light uh, because you have to in some way guide the uh, attention of someone watching a piece of virtual reality because you do have complete control over where you look. Now, a lot of people are familiar with Oculus Rift. Uh, Sony's got its Morpheus. Can you talk a little about the projects you're creating and how they work across platforms? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, we work on every single platform. Our, plat uh, our camera uh, constructs a version of the world that is a true version it is easy for the computer to put together on its own to stitch these multiple cameras together and bring the color temperatures into agreement. But at the end of the day, we create a full left eye and a full right eye and an interactive sound sphere that turns, you know, responds based on where you're looking. Now we can take that left eye, right eye, and the sound sphere and transport it to any platform. And that includes the Oculus Rift, Gear VR from Samsung, uh, Google Cardboard, uh, which is based off Android right now, iPhone's coming very soon and I'll easily port over to other things like Sony Morpheus. And I'm actually particularly excited to see new platforms arise every day. Talking about new platforms, what role do you see VR playing here at Sundance and in effect in Hollywood moving forward? Yeah, it, again, another great question. I think that there's, sometimes when you bring VR to a director or, or someone who's been doing film for quite a while, they try to use the existing language of film to understand VR, but VR is not going to replace film. VR is not going to replace television. Uh, this is its own medium with its own language, its own set of expectations. It's really about immersion and it's about moments where you can put someone inside of something and on their own they can discover the world on their own. And in that world, as a director, you'll be able to utilize things like light and sound to tell different stories in the same space, which means it's fun to watch again and again and get something different each time. Some of the earliest applications we're seeing across the board on Oculus, Morpheus, all those devices is video games. What types of video game language are directors using as they explore VR as a filmmaking process? Well, video games uh, are its own separate beast, right? So right now, VR is kind of in two camps. There is games, right? And when I talk about a game, I'm typically referring to something, it's a polygon created world driven by a game engine, right? So what we're doing and some other people are doing it, we're creating cinematic VR. And that's recording the real world uh, we're doing it with a very different looking camera, but the point is it captures the whole world around you, and that's video. So we're applying video principles to push that through uh, a video engine, which means it's able to work on many more platforms, including your cell phone, 
that you may have had in your pocket for the past year. And that, that's critical for reaching a mass uh, audience. Some of the directors I've talked to today have talked about video games from the perspective of a first-person perspective adventure. Uh, and I was just trying to get at that point, are you seeing directors pull from the video game uh, way of creating to tell stories in this new way? Yeah, some are, and it's effective um, because that language is well understood by a particular demographic, right? Gamers understand that point of view and can flow with it. Uh, but really, the cool thing about VR is that it's a much broader demographic than just gamers, particularly cinematic VR. Video is accessible by a lot of people. It's part of our daily lives. So first person is cool, but there's other versions of VR where maybe you are not the one directly perceiving things, but you're sort of a disembodied other person, like experiencing someone else experience it for themselves. Like you're a companion, a silent companion, while someone else leads the narrative.